This is uh, 127 session of the morning devotion. And uh, we're taking our song from 149, our hymn book. Does Jesus care? It's a question. Does Jesus care when my heart is pent too deeply formed and sunk as the body in press and the cares, the stress and the way grows weary and long? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary, they long. Night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread, dread and fear as the daylight fades into deep night sheds? Does he care enough to be near? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares, his heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I've tried? I'm fed to resist some temptation strong when for my deep grief and I find no relief though my tears flow all day night long. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares, his heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary the long night dreary i know my savior cares and we come before the lord appreciate him for bringing us to this uh, tuesday the question the songwriter asks if those girls does Jesus care? The answer is yes. So let us tell him he cares and let us thank him for the cares that uh, he has been showing upon our lives. Blessed Father, we thank you this morning because it doesn't matter what the devil is trying to insinuate. It doesn't matter what he does. There is no question about your care. It is not in doubt that God cares. The evidences are there, the testimonies are there, the witnesses are there that uh, proof that God cares. And so this morning we want to say thank you as we, uh, we put ourselves back to the care of the Lord, the care of God that is beyond human understanding. This morning as uh, we go with you, we are sure you are going to take us through. We will enjoy the care of God. Your eyes, they run through and through throughout the universe. So you can show yourself strong. You say, cast your cares upon him because he cared for you. And uh, the statements that were made by Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, they are all evidence, are all witnesses or uh, testimonies uh, to the care of God. And uh, the fact that we are alive today, the fact that uh, during the period of pandemic, you fed us. And the fact, great Father in heaven, that uh, none of us is uh, living under bridge, none of us uh, have been, uh, that is uh, living in, a, in an uncompleted beauty. Even if we are doing that, great Father in heaven, it is still the care of God that uh, made it possible for us to have even such accommodation. Blessed Father, we thank you for all. We in no way are we going to accept anything, any suggestion from anybody from anything that you do not care. 
So, Lord in glory, as uh, we we leverage on your tool to this morning and on your care, Father, we will see ourselves, Father, making progress in all areas of our life. Be thou glorified in Jesus' name. As we listen to you, Lord, I pray that your word will enrich and nourish our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, this course is entitled, When the Water Was Spent, When the Water Finished. Now, we are going to uh, read from Genesis to see uh, the story that gave rise to this uh, topic because we know that a number of us here have a, a number of things that are, appear to have finished in their lives. And uh, God wants to assure you that whatsoever has finished in your life, if you cry to him, he will, uh, he will make a provision. He will replenish you. Is it the grace that uh, you have uh, wasted and it has finished? We have evidence of a man that abused the grace, wasted the grace, and the grace finished. And then and he got himself into trouble. But however, when he cried unto God, he now began to renew, receive a renewed grace. The man Samson. So whatever has finished in your life whatsoever has finished in your life spiritually uh, physically materially the god we serve can replenish you genesis 21 can we read from verse uh, 9 and sarah saw the son of hagar the egyptian which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be caught. Yes, Sarah was the person who brought man into this trouble. Yes, and then and Sarah also came up and said, Let this woman out of this house. The thing was so grievous, the thing looked somehow in the eyes of Abraham. And God said, Since you started listening to the woman, okay, go ahead and listen to her. Go and do what she asked you to do. Let it not be grievous in your eyes. And also of the son of the bondwoman, verse 13, will I make a nation because he is your seed. Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water, gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And the child had sent her away with a bottle of water and bread. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. The water finished. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. The water that Abraham gave for her sustenance for their drinking finished. And now she threw the child on one of, under one of the shrubs. And she went and sent, uh, sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she said, she sat over against him and lift up voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What ailed thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an usher. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of uh, Egypt. So 
this is what happened. So Ega was sent out and then with water and the water finished. But when she cried unto God, when the, the Lord had the voice of the Lord, an angel came from heaven and called unto Hagar and asked, what is your pain? If the angel of God could ask uh, Hagar, what is your problem? Don't fear, reassure her, and told her God has had the voice of the Lord, and then and directed and guided her and showed her what to do, open her eyes. There is a nobody that can tell us God does not care about me. There is nobody that can convince us that uh, God will keep quiet if you cry to him for mercy. Now, the case of the birth of Ishmael and all that transpired, all we've seen here, there are among numerous cases and numerous things about God that we cannot comprehend, we cannot understand. How can you explain that this Ishmael, this child that turned out to become the, uh, the, the man that his hand was uh, against every man and his seed is attacking everybody? The extremists of today, the main, most of the terrorism in the world, and fanaticism in the fanaticism in the world and bombing in the world, you find that uh, are championed by the seed of fish man now. And the crisis all over the world, the, this is coming from the region of uh, the children of this person. Now, does God did God know that this will happen? Yes, because he declared the end from the beginning. And yet, he cared. Yet, he showed mercy. Yet, he attended to this person that was at the, about to die. That if not the intervention by giving water, the, the, the child would have died. And that would have been the end of the terrorism, extremism, fundamentalism and all of the troubles and the things happening globally. We can never fully comprehend and understand God, his person, his love, his mercy, his care, and his ways as long as we are in the flesh. We cannot understand. Look at uh, what uh, Paul said about, about understanding certain things about God. First Corinthians chapter 13, let us read verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I speak as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So it follows that we cannot know everything about God fully. There are things we can only know by the time we are out of this life. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy, for his great love where which he loved us. God is rich in mercy, which you and I cannot deeply comprehend. Romans chapter 9, 15 to 23, Paul began to speak about uh, the, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and uh, the mysteries of God, that the love of God, the care, the mercy of God, that you cannot comprehend. So God is indeed rich in mercy and uh, he is rich on his own and uh, in everything god is in his own class that is why he could show mercy even to ishmael and give water to ishmael 
Now, it was that supply of water that the God that saved him from dying. But look at it from this point. If God could provide water and sustain us to a man that he knew that his siege will uh, be torn in the flesh, will be terrorizing the world, the globe, and attacking even his children, then that will show you the wisdom of God, the care of God, considering what the children of Ishmael, the Ishmaelites, are doing today all over the world in the issue of I've mentioned, issues I have mentioned. One would be tempted to ask, did God not know that uh, they would turn out to become the troublers of the whole world? If he knew, why then did he, did he not eliminate them? Let me confirm that God knows. Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. God knows everything. God sees everything from the beginning to the end. In Galatians chapter 4, 22 to 31, he stated how the children of the bond woman will terrorize the children of the free woman. And that is what is happening. So I agree that God knows everything. But why then did he allow Ishmael to live? Because he said Ishmael will live. Abraham asked for Ishmael to live, and God said he will live. Why did he allow him to leave? And then, and not only leave, but uh, showed mercy unto him and make his seed to multiply. The answer is that God allowed some, some things in order to teach us his patience, in order to teach us his, uh, the accommodating nature of God, in order to teach us how we should cherish life. If God does not cherish life, he would have not allow Ishmael to live. But God will not kill Ishmael because every life matters to him. Every life, including black life, including life of other tribes, including life of other people that of other religion, all of those lives matter to God. Every life comes from God. Therefore, he allowed it to teach us that we should be patient, we should be we should learn from his accommodating nature, we should learn from his forgiving nature, we should see how he cherishes life and learn to cherish life. Therefore, those who will, uh, those who are of the seed of uh, of Ishmael, who go about slaughtering people, if God has slaughtered the Ishmael, they won't be alive. They will not be alive to be slaughtering people today. They wouldn't have been born because they are of the seed of uh, Ishmael. Therefore, it is necessary that both the children of Isaac, the believers, and those who are of the seed of uh, Ishmael, they should understand. They should understand that God attaches great importance to life. In Romans chapter 15 and uh, verse 4. Romans 15, can we read verse Four. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Written so we can learn patience, so we can learn 
how to have hope so that we can learn that the nature of God's goodness, forgiveness, accommodating, and how life, every life, matters. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse verse 43 you have heard it will be said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate your enemy but I say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you pray for them which despitely use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send it rain on the just and on the unjust I want you to take note he said uh, pray do good to them that hate you and bless them that curse you he didn't say bless them that kill you he didn't say bless them that kill you he didn't say do good to them that kill you he didn't say pray for those who kill you. Pray for those who despitely use you. He didn't say pray, pray for those who kill you. And so it is, we must know that uh, God does not approve killing. So praying for those who kill you so that they continue to kill us and kill you and kill us is not a biblical, a biblically accepted. So, of course, somebody will say, but... Um, but uh, Stephen prayed. For the, what Stephen said is that God should uh, uh, not count that as sin to them, but they did make God not to count it as sin to them. If they didn't repent, well, God said, okay, because Stephen has prayed, I forgive them their sins. No, sin is sin. Until the person involved he repents and confesses, you are prayer. But we're not giving forgiveness. If I pray that God will forgive all the people that have been killing and they didn't repent, there is no way God will forgive them until they repent and confess and do the correct thing. And so we can also learn and be challenged from the fact that God took care of, uh, of uh, uh, one he knew would be a problem. He didn't kill him, but then he rose up and his hand is every against every man, and his seed is killing every person, his seed is attacking every person. Now, if God took care of uh, Hagar and took care of Ishmael, he will take care of us much more. That's the lesson. Whatever betide us, that's the lesson God will have you to learn. That if God cared for Ishmael and cared for Hagar, who brought confusion, who had entrance into Abraham's life, put Abraham off, disconnected Abraham for about 13 years. Abraham walked in darkness. The woman that had entrance into Abraham's life put Abraham into darkness and nearly jeopardized, nearly jeopardized the nation that was being raised, if God fed her, if God took care of her, God will take care of you. Those of us that are promoting the gospel, God, those of us that are supporting the work of God, if God took care of a person whose ways nearly sabotage the word of God and the program of God, those who are supporting God's program, they are Provision from God is assured and guaranteed. So we can learn also to trust God and understand his love and understand his care and understand his concern and understand his uh, accommodating nature. And then when we know this, it will help us to be able to resist doubt, to resist accusation of Satan, the devil, who accuses God of not caring who makes us to believe that uh, God is behind our problem. God is responsible for our suffering. God is responsible for all our troubles. When we look at uh, the care given to Hagar, 
and this boy, her child, that turned out to become a terrorist uh, uh, breeder all over the world. Then it follows that uh, we will be able to stop listening to the devil's accusations that God does not care. If God care for such a person, if God care for Hagar and care for Ishmael, he cares for you. He cares for me. His care for you cannot be quantified. His care for you is unimaginable. His care for me is unquestionable. His care for me is unquantifiable. This we must know. So this morning, we want to come before God Almighty. Now, what are the things that are finished in your life that you need that God will uh, replenish? Is it grace? Is it uh, uh, faith? Is it righteousness? Is it assurance? Have you become empty? No faith again? No conviction again? What is that thing that has finished in your life? Hope. Has your hope finished? And... Uh, just look at your life and find out what you have spent. You have spent uh, all your strength. Have you spent, wasted all your strength, all the grace? What are those things you spent? And where have you spent them? What are those things that have siphoned you? Are you like uh, the Israelites of uh, the day of uh, Jeremiah? That Jeremiah looked at them and saw them as a uh, people that we are plundered. Has the enemy plundered your life? Has the enemy plundered every precious thing of your life? The grace of God, the qualities of God, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, they're all gone. Apart from that, what are those physical and material things that the enemy have uh, plundered in your life and have uh, harvested everything and you are just uh, uh, empty as uh, the sap of life, spiritual life finished, and you are now just tossed like uh, the dry leaf. You can come this morning to God. If God uh, gave water, to feed the bottle. The bottle was filled. Let's look at uh, uh, Genesis 21 to see that when God opened the eyes of uh, of uh, of uh, Hagar, Hagar's son, Ishmael, and then I showed Hagar uh, the well that she filled her bottle. The bottle was filled correctly. Genesis 21, she uh, filled her bottle, verse 19, and God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad a drink. So the empty bottle that have been wasted, that have been spent, can be filled. The Holy Spirit is departed from you. God can fill you again. Wisdom, strength, understanding, and insight. God can fill you again. Only if you cry to him. Now, if God filled, provided water that filled the bottle of Hagar, he will fill your life with good things. Can we pray? We thank you this morning, our God and our Father, because your care is unimaginable. Your care is unquantifiable. Your care is unquestionable. There are many things that uh, tend to make us to question your care, but from what you have uh, taught us this morning, it is very, very clear, Jehovah, that you care so much. Eternal rock of ages, we bless you because your care is so great. Your care is so much. We thank you and we appreciate you this morning in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, have one seen that you can never be fully comprehended. 
we can never fully understand you are a person, you are love, you are mercy, you are ways, you are care, and all of those attributes. Blessed Father, the little we can understand, we appreciate. We've seen that you are very rich in mercy, and you are on your own class, and you do things so that we can learn. Father, I pray, O oh God, that what lesson we need to learn from the way you handle the case of uh, Ishmael and uh, his mother, blessed Father, feeding them, taking care of them, and even making him to increase, and then 12 nations, 12 people rising, great people, even raising dukes of Edom, Duke of so 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 place and Duke of so 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 place, eternal rock of ages. I am asking the Lord of glory that uh, the lessons we need to learn as we run this Christian race, as we relate with people, my father, as we see what these men are doing globally, I pray, Lord, that we learn the appropriate lesson in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are asked to cast all our troubles, all our cares upon God. So this morning, seeing the care of God for Ishmael and Hagar, then I hope you are convinced that God cares for you. And if you are convinced about God's care, then let us uh, cast our care upon him. Let us bring our troubles. Let's bring our pains. Let's bring our fears. Let's bring our disappointments before the Lord, our worries, our anxieties. Father, this morning we come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he that is seated on the throne, whose ways are past finding out. Jehovah, we bless you. Jehovah, we glorify you. Jehovah, we honor you. You have said we should cast our care upon you because you care for us. We should bring our troubles. We should bring our disappointment. We should bring our loads, we should bring our bodies and put it upon you because you care. And we are we are convinced beyond doubt because if God could care for Ishmael, that is a trouble of the world and that is a is inflicting havoc all over the world, great father in heaven. Now that shows that God will care for us. Therefore, blessed Father, greater care, greater concern, receive all glory because you will care. So whosoever, Lord, that is uh, going through some challenges and through problems, and the person is thinking, and the person is worried, the person is uh, doubting, does God care? Has God forgotten me? If God did not forget uh, Ishmael and the mother that uh, uh, nearly sabotaged his program, my father and my God, then how do, how do, we, uh, how do we think that God will forget us. You cannot forget us. Neither will you care less about us. I want to thank you. Let this conviction, let this thing come deeply into our heart and let it help us to cast all our worries, all our cares, all our troubles upon Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us ask for grace to be like our Heavenly Father in love, in care, in kindness, in mercy, and other attributes that he shares with men. The songwriter said, oh, to be like Jesus. Let's pray and ask God to help us to be like Jesus. Father, this morning, what is happening globally, the behavior and attitude of the sons of Ishmael, Father, is uh, causing global hatred. Oh God, it is uh, affecting many of us, the believers, my Father and my God, and it is not good. The activities of these sons of Ishmael is a wind that does not blow any person good. It is badly, great Father, creating hatred, and so much globally, my Father in heaven, and the word of God said, you love those who hurt you, my father. But the people have gone beyond hurting. They are now killing. They have gone beyond persecuting. 
They're now slaughtering, slaughtering human beings, putting it in the internet for people to behold, my father and my God, and the thing is building up globally in the nations and including our own nation, Nigeria. Father in glory, we call on you, O God. We want to be like Jesus. The way Jesus will address this matter, help us to understand so that the activities of these people, the devil does not use it, Father, to also unleash his wickedness upon us, therefore making us to join those that are already damned. Father, give us wisdom to handle this global development and the hatred rising against the church and against the believers and killing going on globally, especially in Nigeria, Southern Kaduna and other places. Father, give us wisdom and grace to follow in Jesus' name and to handle this matter. Amen. Now the hand of Ishmael is said that it will be against everybody. That is said in Genesis 16, 11, and 12. And then and the hand of everybody will be against him. Now we see the hand of Ishmael being against everybody in Europe, everywhere you see them. Now we're going to pray that the hand of everybody in the world will go against Ishmael. The hand of the nations of the world. No nations will begin to, to to interface with this nation. Let the hand of every nation go against these nations and these people, grandfather, these things that is a creating problem globally, this extremism, this fundamentalism, these terrorism that are being sponsored by even nations that are seed of uh, Ishmael. Let us pray. Father, this morning we ask, O oh God, the one aspect of uh, Genesis 16, 12, 11 and 12 has been fulfilled. Yeah, we see the hand of Ishmael against everybody. We are here to see the hand of everybody against Ishmael. It is when that happens that uh, he will dwell peacefully with his brethren. This is what is the answer. My Father and my God, therefore, in the name of Jesus, we ask him the Lord of glory, let this solution, let this thing that is recommended as a solution for the Ishmael to dwell peacefully with the, in his tent and with others, let it be aroused globally so that it can be tamed, so that there can be peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for believers as the persecuted all over the world, especially uh, those who are where the believers are being killed because of their faith that God will defend them. Father, you are the keeper of Israel. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We bring the nations, O oh God, where Christians and believers are being persecuted and being slaughtered and being killed. Father, the villages in the northeast and the northwest, north central, that are being sacked by these agents of the devils, my father, killing people, slaughtering them, my father, we ask, Lord, that uh, you will defend these people, O oh God. Use whoever you want to use. Use whatever you want to use to defend your people. You say, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Father, you can see the jihad being carried in all fronts. Blessed Father, we call on you, O oh God, God of mercy and compassion. You will rise and defend your people. Thank you very much. Receive glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. The church is here to recover fully from the devastation inflicted on her by COVID-19. I want us to pray for full restoration of the church 
in all areas, our service and everything. People are yet to start uh, coming to church as they ought to. We're going to pray that those who are yet to realize that the house of God is not a place of spreading COVID, and as a result of that, they are still afraid to come to church. That God Almighty will reach out unto them. If you can go to your business, if you can go and buy food, why will you not come to church? If you can go to hospital, where even the people carrying COVID can go, why you? Why are you afraid to come to church? It is the devil that is scaring people from church. And that is the target of the COVID-19, to disorganize the church. The, the devil and those that are propagating and that are carrying out whatsoever about COVID-19, all of them are anti-church. And the church is the target. However, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So let us pray. Father, we come this morning. We know that the church is to yet fully recover from the devastation inflicted on her by COVID-19. But this morning we are praying for full restoration of the church in all areas. Father, businesses are yet to fully pick up. Things are yet to fall in line. Things are yet to pick up, including church. Father, we come this morning asking the Lord that uh, you accelerate, Lord, the recovery of the church and the recommencing fully of the church. Blessed Father, the, the zeal, the excitement, and all of those things that people find when they come to church, people are afraid to come close to one another. The excitement is not there. We can see it clearly. Blessed Father, we look forward that this issue of COVID should be flushed out so that the church can return to normalcy and everything return to normalcy. Thank you, Father, for answer in Jesus' name. Amen. If God supplied water and blessed Ishmael and Hagar, the mother Hagar, the mother of all trouble, the mother of terrorism, the mother of all the, all the global confusion. He, God, will do much more for us, the believers, who are supporting and progressing his cause. So we're going to pray and ask God, supply the finished water, and uh, supply whatever that has finished. Is it grace? Supply it. Let us pray. Father, this morning we ask you, Supply your grace, O oh God. Everyone that you use in time past, in one way or another, you provided, you protected, you supplied, you progressed. Father, this morning we are here. We have uh, supported your work. We have promoted your work. We have sponsored your work. My Father, we are not saboteurs. Even if we have done some things that actually sabotage your work, it is not deliberate. You know that, Father in glory. Therefore, if you attended to Hagar, you will attend much more to your people. Therefore, Lord, this morning we decree and stand authoritatively with assurance that the needs of your people you will meet and you will attend to. We give you glory, we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, let us ask God to lead us out today, bless our families, and bless the family of our Father in the Lord. Jehovah, we thank you this morning. We ask you, lead us today, bless our families, bless our efforts in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy, your hand, rest upon us. Let us see the reward of our service. Let's see the blessedness of supporting your work. Father, we, are, we stand better chances, oh God, of being filled, even though we have been exhausted, even though we have been, we have been plundered, 
we stand better chances of being replenished than uh, Hagar and Ishmael. Therefore, Lord, you know areas we've been plundered. You know the spiritual things that the enemy have plundered out of our lives. You know, Father, in glory, the precious things of the Lord that the enemies have spread their hands to, to spoil and to take. We come this morning asking the Lord for a, a replenishment, for a replacement, or, and for a renewal, for a refilling. We want our bottles to be filled, bottle of righteousness, bottle of the Holy Spirit, bottle of the grace of God, bottle of physical strength, bottle of financial strength, every bottle that has been emptied in our lives. Father, we decree and declare that uh, this morning you fill us to overflow in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer. You will equally open our eyes to the well from where we will fill our bottle from time to time. Open our eyes, direct our businessmen, our business brothers, our business sisters, and the contractors, and all the people. Direct us, Lord, to the fountain of water from where we will continue getting feed from time to time. We bless you for answer to prayer. Glory be to you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let us uh, take this hymn and then we will uh, call it a day. Hymn 147. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I will tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I will tell you how he changed my life completely. And he did what no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much she cared for me. All of my life was full sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms about me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much she cared for me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning and God bless.